I made some wearable art pieces and I'm going to show them to you. Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about some wearable art pieces that I made to use while performing. I have three different pieces to show you today and the first one I want to talk about is this one, the glitter bib. I don't recall my exact inspiration for the glitter bib, but I made it to wear on stage with my old band in New York. And I do know that someone who inspired me a lot during my later years in New York was Tom Murren. Tom Murren, who is also known as the Alien Comic, was an American performance artist and playwright who was active in the downtown avant-garde art scene in New York. He was born in 1939 and passed away in 2012. Now this guy was such a powerhouse. He often bridged the gap between performance art and his own funky, unique brand of stand-up comedy. His performances were really chock full of these innovative, creative, homemade costumes and props and masks that he would change in and out of in a very rapid stream throughout the performance and while he was telling his story on stage. I came upon his work after he'd passed away, but there's a treasure trove of old videos of his performances, especially from the 80s and 90s, on his website, and I'll link to that below. Perhaps the glitter bib is in some way inspired by Tom Moran's work. I made the glitter bib out of fabric. It's got a fabric base, and then I just stitched on Christmas tinsel all over the top, and it's gold in the front, and then silver around the neck, and then red in the back. It felt like a really fun and easy way to add some pizzazz to a stage outfit, and uh, let me show you what it looks like on. The next piece I'd like to talk about is the light ring. Sadly, I no longer have the light ring. It really took a beating over the years being lugged back and forth from venues and gigs, but luckily I do have a lot of videos and photos of it to remember it by. This piece was also one of the ones I used to wear on stage with my old band in New York. The light ring was inspired by classic depictions of saints or of the Madonna with a glowing light all around them. I made the base of the piece using this thick metal wire, which was pretty tough to bend into a circular shape. I remember having to struggle a little to get it into the shape I wanted, but once I had it, I wrapped the circle with this white string of Christmas lights all around it. To make the piece wearable, I designed a rig with a thick belt around my waist that the metal circle attached to, and to keep it from toppling forward, because it was kind of top heavy, I attached a strap that went around the back of my neck to keep the circle upright. It was actually quite comfortable and easy to move in and use on stage. The only caveat was that I needed to plug the lights into an extension cord down at the bottom of the light ring, but that wasn't really a big deal because I had so many extension cords with me to every gig because I had so many pieces that required electricity on stage. As mentioned, the light ring is no longer in existence, but I do still have the original belt that I used for the rig around my waist, and I also still have the original strap that I used around the back of my neck to keep the light ring upright. I really loved that piece, and it always got such a great reaction when I wore it on stage. So I would definitely consider recreating something similar down the line. The last piece I'd like to show you and talk a little bit about is this one, the scissor top. This top and this pair of scissors are the remnants of a performance I did as Galerie at the Loft at Liz's in Los Angeles in 2018. The inspiration for that performance was Yoko Ono's Cut Piece from 1964. In Cut Piece, Yoko Ono sat alone on a stage with a pair of scissors in front of her. The audience had been instructed that they could take turns approaching her and use the scissors to cut off a small piece of her clothing, which was then theirs to keep. Some people approached hesitantly, cutting a small square of fabric from her sleeve or the hem of her skirt, whereas others came boldly, snipping away the front of her blouse or the straps of her bra. Now the artist remained motionless and expressionless throughout until, at her discretion, the performance ended. While I was writing my most recent EP for Galeria called Send Me Your Daughter, I was really interested in the Fluxus movement. And the Fluxus movement was this avant-garde art movement that was happening in the 60s and 70s, and Yoko Ono was one of the artists who were part of that movement. After seeing video of Cut Piece for the first time, I was really inspired to incorporate the spirit of that piece into my own work. At my performance at the Loft at Liz's, 
I wore this top, which was in one piece when I started, and it had a high collar and long sleeves. And at the top of the performance, I laid this pair of scissors within reach next to the stage. Then in between each song of the set, I would go grab the scissors, stand in the middle of the room and cut into the top. I'd start smaller, just cutting into the fabric, like splitting open a sleeve. But as the set went on, I started cutting bigger and bigger chunks off of the top. And at the very end of the set, I cut the whole top off of me entirely by splitting the entire front open, cutting it from the bottom to the top. I chose to wear a bright red camisole under the black top. So as I went along cutting, pieces of red started peeking out from underneath. I wanted to play with the concept of exposing more and more of myself to the audience, both literally and figuratively, as the performance went on. And those are some things I made. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit a thumbs up and leave a comment below. And why not hit subscribe? I'll see you next week. Bye.